Um, so we'll just start. And again, you know, I'll let you maestro the questions. I don't mind when they come, you know, and the, the tougher the questions, the better. I might even not have answers, um, but that, that's good. Sometimes questions are used just to, to drill more questions. So this is for you guys, I'll show you basketball. I know the session was titled season and session planning, and we'll kind of get to that at the end, but I want to set the stage with what's really been on my mind the last couple of years and how I work with players and coaches, um, you know, and that's through cognition and we develop cognition, which is, you know, in sport, the ability to search, decide and execute um, through, through principles. Um, and as we get going here, this is guys, one of my heroes, um, he's a sushi chef in sushi chef, the sushi chef in Japan. And uh, I think this is a pretty cool, he's got a little good insight on terms of we're all coaches here. And, you know, I think we all probably do it because we love it. And, you know, we really are passionate about teaching and helping people and seeing people become more than they are. And so this guy's passionate about making sushi, right? That's his gift. And so he's got some, some wisdom to share. So the Jibunga. やろうと思ったら仕事それにもう没頭しなきゃダメです好きにならなきゃダメですそれ自分の仕事に惚れなきゃダメなんですよただあれがダメこれがダメって言ってたら一生経ってもまともなことはできないと思いますだから自分がこ
And when you think about that positioning and decision making, because a lot of times when you think of skill work, you think of, you know, footwork and dribble moves and all these, these things, and they all are good, don't get me wrong, but positioning and decision making. So positioning on offense from an offensive standpoint, you know, directly affects our, our ability to make decisions. The better position we're in, the more space we create for our teammates. The more space our teammates have, the better decisions they're going to make. And this all goes back to that one word cognition, the ability to search, decide, and execute, make decisions more effectively and more efficiently than the other team. And how we create cognition is through a set of principles. Principles create cognitive connection amongst a group. Positionless basketball without principles is just chaos. Positionless with set plays is structure. But positionless with principles is a well-oiled cognitive machine. And you guys will see how all this ties in, hopefully, uh, to, to practice design and, and season design. Um, and here's a little um, excerpt on, on or a, I don't know what the word would be, I guess, a differentiator here on plays versus principles, where if we start at the top, you know, plays, they, bottom, they bottleneck our practice time into silos and cause inefficiency. So the first thing plays do is they, they slow us down in practice. Right now, we've got to worry about running our play, going over our plays, our individual skill development, out of bounds, zone, this, that, the other, where if we focus on principles, if we're playing with principles, um, and now we're practicing our principles in two-on-twos, three-on-threes, four-on-fours, not only are we getting better uh, as a team, we're getting better individually at the same time. And, and it develops an efficient use of practice time by blending the tactical and technical components together. And we'll get into that, but one thing to remember um, is that a true repetition, so in practice, right, guys shooting, a true repetition always involves a decision. So think about in a game, before someone shoots, they always have to make a decision. Do I shoot? Do I pass? Do I drive? Do I hold it? Like there's always a decision to be made. So if we're really trying to practice deliberately, if another buzzword, then we should always create situations in practice where before we shoot, we've got to make a decision. And now we'll get into, I don't know if we'll have time, but we'll get into, yeah, you know, you can warm up with some block practice and some repetition form shooting. It's all great. But at the end of the day, when we get to the meat and potatoes of practice, guys constantly have to make, guys and girls constantly have to be making decisions. And as a kind of an antidote, like, you know, Bobby comes home from the gym and, and, and his dad says, hey, how'd, how'd it go? How'd your workout go today? He goes, oh, I made, you know, I made, two, I got, made 200 shots. I said, well, how many decisions do you make? I said, I don't think I made any. Well, then you didn't really practice, you just, you know, to be honest. So, or you didn't efficiently practice. Um, as we go down the list here, plays, place the emphasis on individual reps over integrated decisions, where principles creates an integrated player development system developed around cognition. Um, plays, they develop a team reliant on the sideline, right? All the direction, all the intelligence now on the sideline. What are we doing, coach? What are we doing, coach? As opposed to on the floor. And we're relying on them for positioning and decision-making and problem-solving skills. Whereas we play with principles, it develops positioning, decision-making, anticipation, pattern recognition, all these important skills of, of expertise, they're all on the, on the floor. Um, offense, you know, and plays relies more on individual talent and performance year to year rather than team offense and one shared cognition. So one year you're really good because you got these really good players. And the next year you're not so good because you don't have the great players. Like, we play on principles, we create shared cognition in a system. Our offensive uh, production isn't going to fluctuate as much. Creates an, we create an advantage through our shared cognition of dominating time and space. And then the big thing is plays, they become predictable to prepare for. And in principles, we're unpredictable. We're trained to handle any situation that arises. And the two keys to creating, uh, to increasing your chances for a successful outcome in an offensive possession are one, you need to move the defense laterally. Right, so you want to move them parallel to the baseline, away from the midline, not up and down the midline. And two is to be unpredictable. So we want to move the defense laterally, and we want to be unpredictable. Well, you know, more often than not, plays don't at least allow for um, unpredictability. How are we doing, Jared? Anyone got any questions? Is this this happening fast? Uh, no, all good, Coach. Just I, I had a quick question on uh, that plays versus principles diagram. Was that something that you constructed, or, or did that come from a separate resource? Yeah, no, I, I made it. So um, I don't know. Well, no, that's it. fantastic detail. Just saying that was really, really good. So no, keep on going, Coach. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so principles and like the principles that 
and these are all, to be honest, nothing I invented. It's just kind of extracting all the, you know, there's this, we'll get to it, this saying, it says, wisdom simplifies where knowledge complicates, right? Human nature is to just keep complicating, adding more, talking more, doing more, when it's just like, no, we should just be constantly refining, taking away what doesn't matter, like taking away all the inefficiency. Um, and so there was a study in 2003, and what we want to do, we want to create we want, we want to develop creativity with tactical guardrails. It's another way to say principles. A research study conducted in 2003 concluded that expert performers, and that's what we're trying to do, right? We're trying to create experts. Are we going to always succeed? Probably most of the time, no, but we, that's the mindset we should have. Okay, how do we create experts, and what's the proven, what, where's the evidence that shows how you do that? Concluded that expert performers generated a short list of options of higher quality using spatial reasoning over functional reasoning. So when an expert player brings the ball into the attacking zone, they tend to look first for spaces to exploit rather than functional acts of dribble, shoot, or pass. So we want players to function on space. We want them to find space before they worry about their, their double crossover move or their step back. Like, and you kind of see like that's the way players are actually playing now. They're, they're more focused on their moves and actually where's the space and how do I you know, create an opportunity for myself or a teammate because we've developed this culture of, you know, that's the, that's the culture really around, um, you know, player development is developing, you know, working with players one on one in these silos and, and creating these highlight reels on, on social media. Um, so, but if we can get them more, okay, how do you function? There's four other guys in your team. There's five guys on defense. And now really, you know, basketball, soccer, lacrosse, these are all sports based on time and space. So if we can win this, the time and space game, we're going to be in a good spot. So here we go, principles. And all the, these principles are based on that, 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 what we just read in the research here, spatial reasoning. So our principles are based on creating space and giving us a time advantage. And I'm just talking offense tonight, uh, coaches. Um, but you would invert everything for defense. Spacing, it's impairment, it's impairment. It's paramount, we establish shape and spatial accountability, making the defense guard the entire floor. And as I touched on earlier, research shows positioning and decision-making the two most important skills in adult basketball players, right? Um, and, and another way to look at it is we really wanna create improv comics. As opposed to having you know scripted comics, we wanna create improv comics. And improvisation involves many people making sophisticated decisions on the spur of the moment without any kind of script or plot. Now, how do you get there, right? That seems like, how, how, how do you do that? What is terrifying about improv is it seems utterly random and chaotic. It seems as though they get on stage and make everything up. But the truth is, it's not random or chaotic at all. What goes unnoticed is the amount of, quote, deliberate practice. I quote that because, you know, we all use that term, um, at least use it verbally which goes into improv. The comics are developed by a series of rules or principles, and the key is when on stage, they abide by those principles. And what they say, this is out of the book Blink by Malcolm Gladwell. They give a pretty good story about these improv comics. We think of what we're doing as a lot like basketball. That an analogy is great because basketball is filled with split second spontaneous decisions, but that spontaneity is possible only when everyone first engages of hours of highly structured practice of principles. The critical lesson here, Spontaneity isn't random. How good people's decisions are under fast moving, high stress conditions of rapid cognition is a function of training principles and their continual rehearsal and practice. The secret of improv is you could be a great stand up comic and not good at improv, right? Correct. What's the secret? What's the key of it? Because stand up improv doesn't have to be a great stand up. Right. Like Ron Williams did both, for right. example. Okay. But great stand ups are constantly writing their next joke and they're not taking what you're giving them. So if we're having a conversation, they're just waiting for their window to come in with their next like blow. Whereas improv is forgetting your idea and building off your partner's idea. So they're two completely different art forms. The, the listening skill that, re that is required in improv is not important in stand-up. Stand-up's just delivering more blows, delivering uh, more jokes. Were Nichols and May considered the masters yeah. So what he's saying there is really good. He says improv is you're about listening. You're anticipating what the other person is doing where, you know, the stand-ups are just pounding. This is our play. This is what we're doing. Boom, boom. It doesn't matter if the, the audience likes it or not. This is what I'm doing. And so that's what we're trying to create here is these, these improv comics that are really 
operating spontaneously depending on what the defense does. And, you know, so in my, for my job, I help coaches do that as an entire team. And then I help players do that individually. It's a little harder when you work with players individually, because although they might catch on to it, they go back to their team and there's four other players who aren't on the same page now. And that that's a whole different can of worms that we won't be able to talk about tonight in depth. But um, so in short, like, the key to expertise is these experts, what they do is they chunk stuff, right? They chunk it, they have pattern recognition, recall, they see things quicker than anyone else. That's what happens. Their mind's working more efficiently. They have, they have more efficient cognition. And another way to think of principles is just we've chunked down stuff. Okay, all this offensive stuff we've been taught, boom, we're just gonna chunk down to a handful of principles and really pound, whether it's your team, again, or an individual player. It says, in short, we're trying to build experts. The research describes expertise as the ability, some of these words are really important, ability to think ahead and anticipate. That's a huge word. Future events consistently distinguishes expert performers from less expert counterparts. The key to expert performance is experts are able to encode information more efficiently and effectively, resulting in quicker and more accurate decisions and superior motor execution when compared with novice or less expert individuals who have accrued less practice. The ability to recall and recognize patterns is considered one of the key attributes of expert performers. So that's what we're trying to do. Going back to that original slide, like we're teachers and the players are learners. And so we need to understand the best methods um, to help these, these players you know, learn and become experts at recognizing patterns, anticipating, making accurate decisions, all these things, those are the skills we should actually be working on. Pattern recognition, anticipation, and then the other stuff's going to come together. Um, you know, and, and we talked, you mentioned this quote, wisdom simplifies, knowledge complicates, right? It doesn't take, it doesn't take much to complicate things, right? Especially the more you kind of learn, you like to, you know, talk and, and it's just, whoa, whoa. You know, it really takes wisdom to simplify. And like tonight, like I don't think I'm probably going to do a great job, actually. Probably going to give you more knowledge than wisdom. Um, but yeah, it's an art to really simplify. And what the principles do, you know, this is a great quote. This is from Alan Watts, you know, a little bit out there, philosopher. Um, it says, you see, whatever you study to become a master of the subject, you need to realize what are the fundamental principles. And very few teachers of anything ever give them to you because quite often they don't know them. And, uh, you know, it's kind of true. When I think about it back in my experience with some of my coaches or even teachers in school and stuff, it's, you know, that, that resonates with me, that, that, that quote right there. Um, here's one more, you know, little excerpt from our, our guy, Gyro. And the key to him, you know, the top sushi chef in the world is his simplicity. で、お寿司だけポンポンポンポン出していく、そういうピッチに合う人にはとても居心地がいいけれども、お酒飲んでゆっくり静電話してもしようかなんて言う人にとっては居心地の良くないお店です。どのお寿司もシンプル。余計なことを
you know, so as we get into the principles, we'll watch some film here. Uh, I, you know, one way to look at them is tactical guardrails. And for me, when I work with teams or players, we start with tactics. So I teach the players the tactics, whether I'm working with an NBA player, you know, in the off season or a team of players, we start with these principles. And from there we stack our technical instruction on top of it, our footwork, our shooting, our ball handling, passing technique, all that stuff. But we have to have a foundation of these tactical guardrails or what I call principles. And the first one is the most important. It's shape. It's creating and maintaining shape. Um, and it goes back to, uh, we want to, we want our players to function on space. We want to play in space. The more space we have, the more time we have, that's to our advantage. And when you think about basketball at all levels, I've coached at all levels and the most efficient shots stay the same, whether you're coaching at third and fourth grade or the NBA, it's a layup and a catch and shoot shot. Those are the two most efficient shots. You know, they're randomly some outliers, you know, Chris Paul, you know, shoots better as close off the dribble than he does off the catch, but almost more often than not players are always better off the catch and then are always more efficient at the rim. So we're trying to create those two shots and our shape helps us do that. You know, we're big on cutting. We want to move the defense. We don't want to allow them to switch, but more importantly, we want to move the defense, which allows us to move the offense. We pass and cut. Anytime we dribble at, we automatically cut. We don't have any DH. We don't. Individual players, I'll work on DHOs and pick and rolls because they'll go back to their teams. But when I work on teams, we, we just – we don't add pick and roll and DHOs because uh, they do two, – two reasons. One, they limit space for the ball. We're trying to always create space for the ball. Two – or three things. Two, they require dribbling. We, we want to try to pass more than we dribble. And when we dribble, it's, it's to be – it's effective and purposeful. And three, you look at the numbers in any team, you know, in, a, in synergy or – they're, they're most inefficient at, you know, shots are always off the dribble and their most inefficient actions are always pick and roll ball handler. So the last thing I want to do is waste possessions on something that I know is going to be very inefficient. I know it's very, it's counterintuitive and any cultural to say that, but that's the reality. Um, when we drive, we want to limit back to back drives because think about it. When someone drives and kicks to us, if we drive right back, we're driving into a crowd. There's no open space because that's where the ball came from. We typically want to shoot that or swing it, and then we're able to drive off a swing pass. And then when someone drives, we relocate. We don't stand and drive. So I teach teams this and players this. You'll see, you'll see an example of both. Um, and then one of the kind of the examples we'll see from a team aspect from film is a Division Three team, the St. Joseph's College Monks. I worked with them in 2018. Uh, we just simplified the heck out of things. They, and they returned the same guys from 2017 as 18, uh, we took away pick and roll DHOs. We spread the floor. We got the ball moving, cutting, applied all these principles. We changed kind of how they practice or we changed how they practice a lot, um, you know, using effective learning strategies and practice design. As you can see, the numbers speak for themselves. Uh, points per game, they went up. They were sixth in the country that year. Points per possession, they were fifth. Field goal percentage, they were third. Three-point percentage, they were first. Look where they were. This was the same team, same group of players. You know, they went from 34% shooting the three to 43% shooting three. I did not work with any of those players individually. There was no quote unquote skill development done and they increased their shooting by that much. That was a huge, that was a huge mind shift for, mind shift for me when that happened. Um, second in the country in assist and, and, and eighth in, you know, three point field goals made. And we're gonna watch them a little bit. So this first principle cutting, um, we'll watch right now. And this is the engine to everything. This gets the ball moving and the body moving. And I'll connect this to how we design our season stuff. So three passes, he cuts, right? Right, watch that. Boom, now we get a fill. Now that allows this to move, fill. This guy catches. And any denial, we always back cut. And then more importantly, look at our shape. The paint's wide open. This guy, boom, he knows, finish, score. This is against uh, Jim Calhoun coaches in Division Three now. It's against their team. Skip. So you're going to pass any cuts. We get a fill, swing, rips away, kick, shot. So every everything came down to this cut right here. 14, he doesn't have anything. Ball stops. He swings it, and he cuts now to allow movement. This guy fills behind. That gives us everything right there. Catch, he rips away, which we'll get into. Kick, shot. Pass, two cuts, back cut. I mean, there's three cuts already. 
four cuts, five, six. Ball's moving. We got, we've got, remember the two most important skills, positioning and decision-making. We're not allowing the defense to keep, to, to be in position or make decisions here. Watch his position again. There's one cut, two. He's denied, he back cuts, he keeps it moving. Pass, cut. The defense is in constant movement. They caught, denied, back cut, floors open, finish. So behind, rip. Should have been a dribble at for a cut in that, that possession. Not a great one. So we enter here, we call this the playmaker. We don't want to call it a post-up because we don't want guys to try to score on a one-on-one -on -one in the post-up. It's inefficient. We want this guy to catch and be a playmaker. And we pass the post, we get two cuts. So he passed, he got a cut. Now 14 is going to be the second cutter. We get two cuts and play out of it. Boom, guy turns his head, we score. I mean, and it, it's, it sounds simple and basic, and it is. That's the beauty of it, right? The simplicity is in the um, – the, 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 the beauty is in the simplicity. And here's Gino, our guy Gino Oriema, talking about offense. Bruno and I talked about defense offense. Bruno and I talk about it all the time. It's called basketball. Put the ball in the basket. Clean passes, we score. The only time we don't score is when we throw the ball away. You say, well, if you play great defense, you can keep the other guys from doing that. No, you can't. No, you can't. No open threes. And every shot has to be contested. If it goes in, it goes in. Because really good players, you can't stop them from scoring. Sometimes you set that score yet. I think the game has become a bad outcome. That's my answer to everything anybody talks about what's the most important thing at the beginning of the season middle season end of the season offense i was all defense all the time grew up like everybody else grew up all defense all the time no basketball the first week you know defense stands slides take charges dive on loose ball rebound <clears throat> five days into practice nobody can practice why pull groin hamstrings separated shoulder concussions you know but yeah but we're going to be a tough team okay got it got it everybody that can make a shot on your team no but it doesn't matter we're going to guard the hell out of you okay good keep that in mind so you know uh diana tarasi told me she said you know gino used to tell us that defense doesn't win championships offense does and i thought that was interesting so i you want to put that that I thought that was an insightful little uh, excerpt there. So the cutting, so what the cutting does is it gets us moving, it gets the defense moving, and it sets up our driving game, right? And that's, so we're putting pressure on the rim with our cutting game and our driving game. There's no fluff. We keep it simple. The three-point play converted. So you see the back cut right there, catch. And then what does he have here? He attacks. This is like, we would call this a space read, right? Great space read. The space is to your left. Drive the ball away. Boom. Kick. Swing. I mean, so we talked about this. We want to find space on any kick out. He's got two rules. We don't want back-to-back -back drive. He either shoots it or moves it. He moves it right away. Knockdown. Just a really simple play, and everything's based on time and space. Pass, cut. This guy fills. Swing. He drives it, kicks. Fill. Drives it. Kick. Back-to-back -back drive. And what I would say to a player in this situation, you say, well, no, Noah, you don't want back-to-back -back drives. Watch what happens here. So he drives, he kicks right here, touch, drives back. But I say, well, what's the give back? At the end of the day, the, we, if there's open space, we give, we give that principle back, meaning he can he can back-to-back -back drive as long as he says, if I say, hey, Tots, why'd you do that? I say, coach, you know, there's open space. He's like, Tots, that's a great answer. Now we know they're really learning 
and internalizing these things at a high level. Drives, hits to fill behind, one more shot. I mean, they just don't hold the ball. Every decision, every every decision is made before they catch it because they know what they're supposed to be doing, and that and that's been been drilled through practice. So we get a drive. Everyone moves off the drive. He catches and goes. Great finish at the rim. We call that a circle finish. Now watch what happens here. Um, so he's, we're improvising, but we're playing on the principles. We've got our shape. We drive left. Everyone moves that direction. 33 moves. He 20 moves. This guy's filling behind moving. This guy's moving left. And he's already seeing before the play, he's going, oh, I got all this space. I'm going to eat it. He doesn't hesitate. He goes, finishes on the other side of the rim. That's a great – so, and that's a, that would be from a technical standpoint, that's a great finish. We want to always finish away from length. So our driving game is so important, but our cutting game sets it up. Our driving game doesn't happen if we don't establish our cutting game. So there's a drive, kick, swing, drive back to the pass. If you guys see this pattern, we've talked about, watch this pattern. You don't want back to back, more often than not, you don't want a back to back drive. So we're just playing in patterns. So swing, he drives it. He kicks, swing, drive again. Just, there's just pattern. And these guys are these patterns pounding their head, and they know the patterns quicker than the defense. So they're just really tough to stop. They're playing with what we talked about at the beginning, shared cognition. So this is really good. This guy brings it up. Watch which way he drives. When we drive, everyone's got to move. So everyone starts moving. Look at all four players move off the drive. He hits this fill behind pass. He knows on a kick out, I'm shooting it or swinging it. He swung it right away. Great job. Catch, we get in the post. We talked about th this is coming at you guys fast, I know. We get in the post, we want two cuts. There's one cut, there's a second cut. We don't like it, we kick it out, we swing it. He drives, finish. He's got all this space, finishes at the rim. And that guy is not a very athletic kid who finished like that. But when he's playing in space, everyone's a lot more efficient. There's our drive, kick, swing, swing, shot. So you just start to see how it comes together. You know, and we're flying through this tonight. We got limited time. But, um, you know, I work with coaches on this. I mean, this is like multiple, multiple sessions. Drive, kick, swing, comes back, drives, kick, shot. So they just, they're, they're playing, they're on all instincts. Like we talked about the improv. There's no hesitation. It looks, it looks random and chaotic, but there, there's a method to all this madness. Pass, cut. Kick, swing, swing, drive. So they just when you, they're applying the principles instinctively, and it's really tough to to to, to defend. Here's Jay Wright. He's got a great little excerpt. Out of here. space, but you guys you should be thinking that when kicking ahead. Yeah. Right. When you have to think when you're playing the sport, it's going to slow you down, right? And, and you're going to lose your aggressiveness. When you have good guys, they're trying to do everything right. While they're thinking, they're thinking, I don't want to screw up. But well, and when they're doing that, they're actually screwing up because they're not being aggressive. They're not playing hard enough. It's a concept we try to get across for guys. That you put the time in and practice trying to learn how to do it correctly. Now it's game time. You're not going to do it correctly. Don't be hard on yourself and don't be thinking about it. Trust your habits and just play off of each other as we talk about playing together. It's really good. So he just says we don't want the guys thinking. And so – if we don't want them thinking, then one practice is important, but also like we got to limit the things they got to think about. <laughs> Let's just give them a handful of things to think about and pound them. So then when they get in the games, they're not even thinking anymore. Right. And uh, that's huge in developing decision makers. You know, so we talked about in the drive, we don't want guys standing and uh, everyone's got to relocate in the drive. And when we establish our shape, so we kick swing right here. So there's a dribble at, so we get our back cut. People are moving now. We don't want to dribble handoff swings. He cuts, swing, drive, swing, and then he drives. And then look, he's driving, he's driving right, 14's right, moving right. This guy's in our, in our baseline spot, he's moving right. Hits him, and he kicks out. We get a mid-range. Not bad, not a bad possession. I mean, everyone's moving. Um, ideally, we didn't. You know, we got something behind the three, but it's all good. So he drives. There's a back cut on denial. Swings it. Tw 22. Knows his roll. Doesn't hold it. So we get a – there's our post touch. We get a cut. Get a second cut. Uh, sorry, guys. Quick three to get things started. With this. Uh, quick three to get things started. With this. Sorry that um, 
if you don't hit the right thing. Oh, let me go back. Okay. Here. Right about here. So there's our cutting game, swinging it, good, pump, bumping back, reversing it quick. Now in the playmaker, we get a cut, there's a one cut. So he's driving with his right hand in the playmaker, that's a drive. This guy right here, he's moving to his right, hits him, and then he relocates back, great possession, great job. So he, Creating shape, I mean, just a great job after, the, after the, the give up, creating shape again. Back cut, find the guy, give it up, driving. And the key to this play was, so right here, as he kicks it out and five drives left, which way does he move? He moves left, so now if his defender, his defender's got a choice, do I stay home or do I go with him, right? So he creates it, so he goes with him. Right there, he moves with him just a little bit. Now it creates just a one-on-one. -on -one he gets there and finishes and one. So the relocation is so important because it creates space for the ball. And if our defender helps, now it creates space for us. So, and that baseline spot is a deadly spot um, to relocate out of. So we're just creating shared cognition through principles. Once we get this, then we can, then we know what to look for and know how to design sessions. So watch this play. Watch our guy in the baseline here. He drives right, he moved right. But then watch him come back into play. He back cuts, scores. And they're just deadly in that baseline by relocating. Here's an example of hitting what we call the fill behind guy. Catch, swing, good relocation. That wasn't actually a good example of it, but watch what these guys do. So. This guy's gonna drive, he drives left. Watch which direction everyone moves. Two should have moved more left, but one gets to the corner, moves left. Three is moving left. Great job relocating, not standing. He knows on a kick out, he moves it right away. Moves it, we get a wide open corner three. I mean, look at them, they're just, the defense is running around in circles. Great job, these guys relocating off drives. In the post. He, he feels behind, he creates his passing window, 14, create, gets in the passing window right there, kick out. So not standing when someone's got the ball, whether it's in the post and they're driving or from the three and they're driving, creating passing windows, create open catch and shoot shots for yourself. So, so important. He drives, gets the guy in the baseline, then look what he does. He sees there's a space right here, there's the passing window in the corner, he gets there, gets right behind him, kick out, open three. Just everything. It's so important that we don't stand on drives. But what sets up the drives is the cutting. What sets up the cutting is our shape. So they all play in one another. There's a drive, one filled behind on the drive. Now he's available for the kick. Catches, rips away. Everyone's driving. Look at threes going left, twos moving left. Pull behind, everyone moving on that drive. Great job. Kick over the top shot just a great possession really moving and you'll notice this guy in the weak side corner he'll be he'll be back cut on the baseline because he's got to move right he's opposite of the ball and don't worry this is coming at you guys a lot it seems complicated it's not once you get the once you get to it we've already seen this so watch what happened he drives left this guy's staying in the corner he's got to move left so he moves left clear space so now when two catches he's got space to drive Remember, everything is about finding space. That's what we want our players to seek. Gets there, finish. Just a great job relocating out of that corner. He's the one that created the two points for us, but won't get credit for that in the box score. So as you watch these guys a little bit, you see, wow, it looks really random and chaotic, but they're all in sync. And that's what we call shared cognition. So he drives right, watch three, uh, watch three move right. Good for me to get things stuck. <laughs> Right here, watch three move right. And then he gets a kick out. He knows I'm no back-to-back -back drive. He swings it, shot. Just a great job. And then here, here's the Spurs. I mean, this is, you know, shared cognition. They beat, they beat Miami bad in the 2013-14. I mean, we're getting, time's flying when you're having fun. So we're going to get through this. But Kawhi drives, 
kicks. And look what Splitter did, though, right? Watch Splitter. So Kawhi's going to get in the post. Splitter's going to be in that opposite dunker. Kawhi's going to drive right. Watch what Splitter moves to his right. Moves to his right, gets a layup. So he got two points just by having cognition, by being aware, moving without the ball. Made it easy on himself. So, and there's a great quote. It says, methods play no favorites. So people say, oh, this can't work in the NBA. It can't work in college or it can't work. I've taught it at all levels, hours and hours. I've got players from third and fourth grade to NBA. It's, it, methods play no favorites. It works for everyone. Coach, real quickly. Uh, yeah. Question on the drive and kick. How yep. would you approach a team that doesn't have such great shooters? Yeah, so that's the thing. Like, uh, I, and that's why I showed the stats. So you shot St. Joe's shot 34% the year before. They shot 43%. Part of shooting is, one, strategy. So, one, you got to take great shots. And if you saw St. Joe's gets a lot of great shots. They get open looks. Everyone's touching the ball. They feel engaged. Confidence is up. And, two, it's how you practice, right? So I would say – and that was, if you talk to these coaches, they go, I always thought you needed to recruit the players to play like this. But then I realized it was my responsibility to create these players. And so my answer to that would be, you got to create the players. It's through deliberate practice. It's through your strategy and your practice design, which we'll get to. Good question, though. At what level are we talking about? I mean, yeah, it's irrelevant. Yep. Well, think about this. Like, even if you don't have good shooters, right? Still, the most efficient shot is going to be a catch and shoot shot for them. So, if you have bad shooters, let's say they shoot 20% off the dribble, they're probably going to shoot 30% off the dribble. So, at the end of the day, you still got to get the most efficient shot available, even if that's a 30% shot. And then, if it's a three, now it's 50% more. So, that's actually not a bad shot for you guys. So, it's a natural question, but, um, you know, my answer is strategy and practice design. Thank you, coach. Yep. Too many people get caught up in technique and shoot, and I'm not saying anything against that, but that's, that's just um, practice design and strategies is just as important as we saw with St. Joe's numbers. So here's a swing pass. Say, how does Patty Mills beat LeBron James? I mean, it's not even close right here. He saw the play in the space before he caught, boom, gets there, finish, right? So this stuff, methods play no favorites. Um, and, you know, this is – quick team practice when I this was their third practice so I went up there to help them do stuff and we just start with the basics three on oh pass and cut I mean it and working on the tech the technical aspect of this is the outside hand passing as you watch finish and then you could say okay only finish off your left hand our left leg right leg you can add in little constraints we get in the post two cuts so we just rehearse it here we get them feeling it okay here's our cutting game then we play this guy's going to dribble but we're trying to play three on three on three, no dribble now. And it's going to be ugly to start, but you want desirable difficulty. That's what makes practice. All right, we get it moving. Here we go. This was like their first, second, third day. First day with me, me but now we're, adding, now we're adding a dribble, trying to get guys to move off the ball. That guy didn't really know what was going on. A lot of these guys still don't know what's going on the first day. But what you do see is the ball movement and body movement. And I'm not going to go through this whole practice. We just don't have time, but I want to touch on you guys. So now if we know we want to play on principles, it's easy to design practice. And now it's easy to have a metric on like an objective metric. Are we getting better or not? So you just start small side of games, small side of games, pounding your principles. Okay. we didn't.